Hi, and we're going to talk about rejection sensitivity. Now, rejection sensitivity is it's a psychological concept, and it refers to an individual's heightened sensitivity to the possibility of rejection in social situations or from an identified other. Now, a lot of my clients, whether they're on the BPD spectrum or the NPD spectrum, which is borderline personality disorder spectrum or the narcissistic personality disorder spectrum, they still deal with this rejection sensitivity in a lot of different, different ways. And the components that we're going to talk about today relate to both. And I think it's really important to be aware of it. A lot of individuals along the borderline personality disorder spectrum, their classic core content, one of those factors is rejection sensitivity. Now, core content are those things that all of us have inside ourselves that when they get activated, we respond in an almost habitual, immediate way. And it can be positive or negative. So classic core content for individuals with BPD, that is rejection sensitivity, emptiness, and abandonment. Now, for individuals along the narcissistic spectrum who do experience rejection sensitivity, however, it's not a core content area for them. And classic core content for individuals along the narcissistic spectrum, those are typically fear, shame, doubt, inferiority, and guilt. So rejection sensitivity can sometimes manifest in narcissistic individuals in a lot of different ways. And it can also manifest differently in a lot of different ways for individuals along the BPD spectrum as well. So let's go over it. Let's break down rejection sensitivity and get a greater sense of understanding. And at the end, I'll go back and talk about surface content. And that surface content are the beliefs, behaviors, and patterns that individuals like yourself, myself, everybody engages in when our core content gets activated. So first, the first component is anticipation of rejection. So anticipation of rejection. This is that rejection sensitivity when you expect or anticipate rejection even in situations where it may not be present. And the anticipation can trigger intense emotional responses. So that means that maybe somebody doesn't text you right away and you're like, oh my God, they hate me, they don't like me, they're gonna break up with me, they're gonna cheat on me, whatever it may be. You anticipate that rejection, so then that activates that rejection sensitivity, that core content, so you behave in a particular way. The emotional responses could be beliefs, behaviors, and patterns, and a lot of times they're maladaptive, so they're really destructive to your relationships. Number two, this is heightened emotional response. This is when you may experience intense emotional reactions to perceived or actual rejection. Now, these emotions can include anxiety, sadness, anger, or a combination or other specific responses. So it's that heightened activation. So one and two, now all of these aren't mutually exclusive. Let me say that here, because a lot of times they overlap, they're intertwined. So they affect one another in a variety of different ways. So it's important to bear that in mind. But that heightened emotional response, so you feel that you're gonna be rejected. So then your emotions start going and your brain starts going and your fear gets activated. Your anxiety gets activated and you feel like you can't control it. So you do something. Maybe you blow them up on text or you start calling all the time or you go over their house or you, and don't do this, or you slash their tires, whatever it may be. It's that heightened emotional response. And it's just feels like it's an immediate reaction. Let's talk about number three. This is an over-interpretation of cues. Now, this is when you overanalyze social cues. You're searching for signs of potential rejection, and this hypersensitivity can lead to misinterpretation of others' behaviors, seeing rejection where it may not exist. For example, it's when individuals along the BPD spectrum that when it's a neutral circumstance, maybe you're just hanging out, right? You just don't have anything to say. You're just both kind of sitting there. For individuals along the BPD spectrum, they interpret that as negative. They may say to themselves that, oh, well, this person's bored with me. 
Oh, this person doesn't like me. This person is unhappy with what I said, did, did I upset them in some way? Whatever it may be. And that becomes that activation of rejection sensitivity. And because you overinterpreted or misinterpreted the cue, that hits that emotional response. Now, individuals along the narcissistic spectrum, their overinterpretation of cues, because they tend to be focused on themselves, they tend to have a more distancing response which means that they tend to minimize the presence of the other, other individual. They kind of see them as, it's like, who's this person? They're not better than me. Like, oh, they don't have anything interesting to say. Maybe they're too stupid to come up with anything good. Because their rejection sensitivity has been activated, and you really see the difference, is that then they sort of, it amplifies that narcissism. Just like in the individual with BPD, it amplifies those BPD maladaptive beliefs, behaviors, and patterns. So both of these personality disorders, they just respond differently to that over-interpretation of cues. Now the next one is impact on relationships. Now that rejection sensitivity can significantly impact your relationships. And you may engage in behaviors aimed at avoiding rejection. This could be people pleasing, avoiding social situations altogether. And think about sort of the extreme ends of that spectrum. You'll do anything to make someone happy so you're not rejected. Maybe that's you. Other side is that I will avoid social situations altogether so I'm not rejected. So where do you fall? And take a moment and kind of think about that. Do I people please or do I avoid situations? How about in the middle? Here's what the middle looks like. The middle is when you might avoid certain social situations, but then you end up meeting somebody and you build up a friendship. Then in order to stay in that friendship, then you engage in people pleasing. So you have a very small social group because you avoid most social engagements, most, most social situations. Then when you're in them, the people in there, you try to change who you are to please them. And you see that in both individuals with BPD and NPD as well. Now let's talk about self-esteem. That's the next one. And this is that rejection sensitivity is often linked to how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem issues. And that fear of rejection, it can absolutely contribute to feelings of inadequacy, worthlessness, or negative self-image. So what happens is you're in these situations and you're not always going to get along with everybody. But remember that if you're along that BPD spectrum, that when it's a neutral stimulus, a neutral situation, right? You're just sitting at the table, there's nothing to talk about. Then you turn it on yourself. That's what BPD does. It causes you to turn it on yourself. And when you turn it on yourself, you're saying, oh, I'm, I'm just not an interesting friend. I, I, they're bored with me. They're bored with our relationship. They probably don't want to be friends. I'm a terrible friend. Nobody likes me. And that's the self-esteem component. The narcissistic component, the NPD component, and as it relates to self-esteem, is that they then, because they have that distorted view of self, that greatness, that grandiose sense of self, that then they start to say that, well, you're worthless. I mean, you're stupid. So they protect their self-esteem using a narcissistic distortion of how great they are so they minimize that other individual who they see as threatening, who is threatening their self-esteem because of the rejection sensitivity that is related to their sense of self, their self-esteem. Next, number six, this is defensive behaviors. Now, you attempt to protect yourself from this perceived rejection and you may develop defensive behaviors. This can be withdrawing from social interactions. You could be excessively cautious, like who you get close to, who you know. Sometimes you may actually just deplete your social circle altogether because of that fear of rejection sensitivity. And you can even, and I think we see this a lot in individuals along the NPD spectrum, is that you adopt a defensive attitude about it. Right? And you can imagine that an individual along the NPD spectrum, that defensive attitude is, you know, they're not interesting, they're stupid, they're not special, so on and so forth. Whereas that withdrawing from social interactions, being excessively cautious, I see that a lot in my clients along the BPD spectrum because they're worried that if I get into a relationship with you, that you may recognize, remember this is related, remember these aren't mutually exclusive, so they're related, you may 
realize, this is a belief, a false belief, that I have no worth, that I'm not a good friend, so then you don't, you're not going to want to like me anyway, so I'm just going to beat you to the punch, and I'm just not going to be friends with anybody. And that all of that doesn't become the conscious thought. It becomes a very muddled, nebulous thought, but the behavior is towards that goal, that sense of social isolation that they utilize to protect themselves from rejection sensitivity. But you typically see this in individuals that have a core content of loneliness. Now, the next component is how it can impact decision-making. Now, rejection sensitivity can absolutely influence your decision-making. You may avoid situations where you fear rejection, even in those situations that could be beneficial or meaningful. Now, in some instances, I think we see this in the therapeutic relationship, is that you start to get attached to your mental health provider. You get very worried. This is for more of the individual with BPD, is that you get more concerned, more worried that they don't like you, that you're not a good patient, you're not a good client, you're not growing fast enough, whatever it may be. So then you destroy the relationship either by continual no-shows or you act out in a way that is completely inappropriate. So that forces the clinician to end the relationship. And then those with NPD, typically what you see, and I've experienced this multiple times in my clients that are along the narcissistic spectrum, in that they just utilize excessive criticism and that the session becomes a focus for them on, as a therapist, are you good enough and worthy enough to treat me? And really what they're trying to do is that they're undermining the therapeutic relationship and they're trying, it's, it's a power struggle in a lot of ways. And we see that you can try to manage a healthy relationship this way. An unhealthy relationship, particularly a therapeutic one, is when the therapist or the client has a greater power distribution than the client or patient. So we have to be on the same field. And when you're vying for superiority, you're wasting therapeutic time. It, it starts to eat away and erode the therapeutic relationship. And when it's out of that rejection sensitivity, again, you're trying to be the other individual or the relationship to the punch. So instead of being dismissed or broken up with or canceled as a client, whatever it may be, then you just destroy it in the meantime. Lastly, let's talk about relationship patterns. Now relationship patterns, now absolutely are impacted. It could be therapeutic, but let's talk more about like friend platonic or friend and romantic relationship patterns as it relates to rejection sensitivity. And it absolutely contributes to patterns in relationships, could be fear of intimacy, could be difficulty trusting others, could be a tendency to quickly end relationships to avoid potential rejection. And I think we certainly see this again, it's always beating that rejection to the punch. We see that pattern in these eight components of rejection sensitivity. We, did, were we able to pick that up? Whether it's BPD, borderline personality disorder, or NPD, you're always trying to manage that rejection sensitivity by a destruction of the relationship. And when that pattern is in play, what happens is the individual ends up with a very small or empty social network. And that social network when it's empty, that adds to the loneliness. It adds to a false validation of negative self-esteem, a belief of worthlessness, and all these other things. And what happens is, is that that little family in the head that, uh, that I, I call it, I got that term from Laura Smith Benjamin, brilliant psychologist, um, that it then family in the head, that's a chorus in your brain, starts using these instances to not only solidify your maladaptive beliefs, behaviors, and patterns, but it also turns it on you. And it then continues to drive you in the dirt to feel lower and lower and lower. And then that little voice tells you, see, no one is in your life because you're worthless. And all you have is me. And me is BPD, 
or NPD or whatever it may be, whatever maladaptive belief you have internalized. And you, you got to resist that stuff because when you understand some of the key components that's related to rejection sensitivity or other factors related to your personality or personality disorders or maladaptive habits is that you have to develop strategies to manage and cope with that rejection sensitivity. And this can really improve your overall well-being, your relationships, and it can really help you. Therapy can be a great tool to help you, but it takes time and you have to explore these issues. And hopefully you, know, you find a therapist that you can work with, who you feel comfortable with, because that is a central component. Because when you find a therapist you can relate to and trust and feel safe with, you see that there's less rejection sensitivity, maladaptive behaviors, and that person can help you grow and develop and do it differently. And if you have overcome your rejection sensitivity, I want you to leave comments and so other people can learn from them. A lot of people read those comments, me included. I try to read as many as I can. And I hope you enjoy the video and please like, share, subscribe, comment, and hit the little bell. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.